Welcome to this week's One Image My Edit. This week I'm going to be showing you how to recreate this tilt shift effect in Photoshop. It's a really, really easy effect to do and it gives you this amazing look and feel to your images. As you can see, these cars and people look like miniature characters out of a little set. So before we get on to how we actually do that, I just want to explain to you what tilt shift is and how it works and, and why you need to know that. So tilt shift is actually used on specific lenses so that you get these lenses and you get cameras as well that, that can move. And what this enables you to do when you shift is to alter an image's perspective. So if we look at this church here on the left and then the church on the right, you can see the one on the right looks much better because we've got our line straight where the one on the left looks like it's almost leaning back. It's like it's going to fall over. So when we shift the lens, it allows you to frame your shot work without having to move the camera body. And by shifting the lens parallel, you keep the image plane straight. So what this is doing is correcting what's known as converging verticals. And that are these lines here. So you can see as we change and shift that lens without moving the camera, then we end up with parallel lines because our back of our camera is kept straight. So that gives us a, a corrected image, so to speak. This is used a lot in architectural photography and in still life photography as well. The tilt effect enables you to change the focal plane. And that's what is done on here. The focal plane is divided up into three parts. So let me just reset this back and zoom out and I'll show you what I mean. The three parts are the foreground here, the middle ground here, and then the background here. What usually happens is, is that when you take a picture, you focus and you'll focus on a subject or an object. So let's just say we focused here. Well, what's going to happen is, is that this area here is going to be slightly soft and this area here is going to be slightly soft too, depending on your aperture, depending if you do a few other different things as well. But in general, that is the case. So what we can do with the tilt adjustment is actually just choose a focal plane wherever we want on the picture, but we can also narrow it as well. So we, if we wanted to, we could just have this section here in focus, or we could just have this section here in focus. It's entirely up to us. Now, for an image to work best, it's a good idea to photograph something from above. It works really, really well when you're looking outside of a hotel window, something like that, or if you can get up high anywhere and shoot down, because it just gives you more to play with. It gives you a lot more room for trial and error as well. Also, what I would suggest you avoid is having buildings that are just on the side of your image. For instance, if you were a little bit lower up and this building here down here on the right was covering say this part of your image and this building was covering this part of this image here as well, it wouldn't work because when you select that single plane, then this is going to be out of focus, but you'll still be able to see it. It will still be there. It won't give you the miniature look that we're after. Now you know that, I'm going to walk you through the process. And like I said earlier, it's really, really simple. So the first thing we want to do is convert this to a smart object. So we need to right click onto the image and then select convert to smart object. The reason why we do that is because if we make an adjustment, we can always go back. If you don't convert it to a smart object, then once you make that adjustment, it's there and it's done forever and you can't go back and change it. All we need to do now then is come up to the top here where it says filter and then come down to blur gallery and select tilt shift. So when you're presented with this, you can see you've got these lines here and you've got this circle in the middle. If you click on the middle, you can actually move this around. So you can move this anywhere you want on your picture. And you can see there that you've got full control. The next thing you've got is actually the blur. If you click in the middle and push, you can see that as I increase that, then the blur is getting stronger. When we look at this, we've got these dotted lines here, one at the top and one at the bottom. What that means is, is that this area here is going to be in focus. Okay. And then we've got the solid line to the dotted line. So this is the feather. This is where it's still in focus, but it starts to gradually feather 
into an area when it reaches this point it is then out of focus okay so we have that at the top so if I wanted to push this higher I could and that means that you can just see there that this area here is still in focus and it's gradually moving all of these buildings out of focus now and the same down here you can see that these cars are out of focus and if I pull this down you'll see that these will start to come into focus again now the interesting thing is if I zoom out is that you can actually move this line out of your picture so you can bring it right out of your picture same on the top so you can have full control over how much feathering you want done so I'm just going to bring these back into it the other thing that we can do is we can turn this so you can see you've got a degrees there in which you can select so I would recommend not doing that but sometimes you might want to do that just because you get different effects but to recreate the tilt shift effect truly then we need to keep it at zero so if we look at the tools that we've got on the right hand side you'll see there that it says tilt shifter which is selected so we've got our blur which we can increase and decrease and you can see that that line will then move up and around that circle area and then we have distortion so we have the option to increase distortion and decrease distortion and what this will do it will just make everything in the middle it's almost like it, it pulls it into the middle so everything is being pulled into the middle of the image okay. and then you can click on symmetrical distortion and that will that will make sure that it's symmetrical either side so you can use that and some people like it some people don't it's really your choice so play with that and see what you like and what is your preference if we come down to the bottom here where it says effects then we have light boken at the top and what this will do is actually start blowing out the top of your image so you can see as i increase that that blows out the just that top section of where this dotted line is and you can also change the color as well so you can almost just warm them up a little bit if you want to then if we come up to noise and click on there we have the option of adding a little bit of grain sometimes this is a good idea because it it almost binds the image together and it makes it look real rather than a, a digital edit so to speak so you can bring the size and the roughness right down and uh yeah and just play with that i would always recommend just having a, a just a small amount in there just to help bind it all together so with this here what i'd like to do is just have a play and zoom in and think about where this effect is going to be best positioned so i do think around around this area here and i think if we bring this in we can really get a miniature effect going so i'm thinking about just lining that bus off at the bottom there and let's just see what it looks like with a little bit more blur but with this effect and with anything in Photoshop less is always more in my opinion it's always a better result so that looks that looks pretty good so what we can do now is come to the top here where it says high quality and click on that and then select OK that will then render a high quality image for us which it's done straight away so that looks pretty good so if we look at the before and after on that if I just take a snapshot you can see there's a before and there's the after so it's a very very subtle effect and it looks really really interesting but if we do think well actually I want to make that a little bit stronger then because we made it a smart object all we need to do is come down to where it says blur gallery double click on that and it will bring it back up for us and now we can say okay let's let's really blur that let's let's just pull that maybe pull the bottom in a little bit just to give the effect um, that's a little bit stronger there we go and let's yeah let's blur that a little bit more just so we get a stronger effect so you might be thinking okay that's what I want to do press OK and then there we go we've got the effect if we zoom in you can see there obviously that is way way too much and the reason why I went back and done that is just to show you that less is always more in my opinion because you can see this looks fake how we had it to start with I think was the was the best setting but just having that smart object really helps you because you can go back and just change things up take your time with it and just think about how this would naturally occur and 
once you're happy, yeah, you can look at that and uh, yeah, it gives you that miniature effect. So there you go. So have a play, see how you get on. I hope that's helped and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.